my sphere of duty concerns, strictly speaking, Darfur. But I am wishing peace not just for Darfur, but for the entire country of Sudan. Together, the media and I have a responsibility in this endeavor to build trust, to give hope, and to encourage reconciliation and peace in the entire space of Darfur, and by extension, the whole of the Sudan. I'm taking this opportunity to invite you that don't just be too comfortable with Khartoum. Come over also to El Fashar once in a while, which is our capital of the region, so that you can see for yourself and feel for yourself what we see and what we feel too as people living in those places, in that place. Our efforts as UNAMID cannot work in isolation, cannot go in isolation. For it to achieve results and attract the right traction, it must involve each and every one of us. The people of Darfur, the people of the wider Sudan, but also in particular those who shape and mold opinions and views about events as it affects Sudan and as it affects Darfur in particular. Ladies and gentlemen, one beautiful aspect of this meeting here today is that it affords me a unique opportunity to share with you some of the outcomes of recent events, particularly the strategic tripartite meeting that we just concluded in New York, which took place about two weeks ago, where I presented Yuname's perspective of events there. I also have the opportunity here to brief you on some of my activities as Joint Special Representative and Joint Chief Mediator in Darfur of both the UN Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki Moon, and the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Madam Zuma. At the end of my interaction with you, my spokesperson, Ashraf Asa, will open the floor for questions that you may have and that you may require clarifications, issues that you may require clarifications on. May I now begin with the 22nd tripartite meeting, which was held in New York two weeks ago, to which I have already referred. This was the 22nd tripartite meeting. Tripartite because it comprises three pillars. The African Union, the United Nations, and the government of Sudan. Of course, just I was present. I was present on that occasion, but I'm hybrid by nature. I have two hands, but I also have represent two organizations. And that perhaps complicates, if you like, or facilitates. I don't know, it depends on the position that you take. But hybrid is a very, it's a very complex phenomenon. And this is a hybrid mission. All participants at that meeting recognize the importance of the tripartite coordination mechanism as a tool for addressing the challenges of effectively implementing the mission's mandate, the mandate of UNAMID. I want to tell you that that meeting was 
was interesting in many ways. Perhaps the most fascinating aspect of it that I saw, and all those who attended it testified to it, that it was held in a most cordial, frank, and warm atmosphere, collaborative atmosphere. All the issues that were on the, the two issues that were on the agenda, mainly the operational and technical issues of visa, customs, and access, were frankly and comprehensively discussed. But so also was the issue of the exit strategy. Exit strategy here meaning how UNAMID will eventually exit its mission in Sudan, in Darfur. Unlike what perhaps we have witnessed before, there were no two blocks in this meeting. The government of Sudan many times spoke of UNAMID as our UNAMID and as our mechanism, our organization, our instrument brought into existence by our common mutual consent to achieve an objective of mutual, mutual beneficial interests. The forum discussed progress in the formulation and actualization of that exit strategy in line with the benchmarks set out in the UN Security Council and the African Union Peace and Security Council resolutions appertaining thereto. The UN, AO, and GOS delegations agreed on the need for a clear plan with concrete deliverables, which will be developed during the month of April for discussions at the next strategic tripartite meeting to be held in Khartoum towards the end of May this year. To that effect, a trilateral mechanism was given birth to that will meet in Khartoum by the second half of April. And prepare grants for the 23rd strategic tripartite meeting that is scheduled to hold towards the end of next month, which is May. In the course of that meeting, the meeting was briefed on those aspects of our relations that have received positive encouragement from our host authorities including, for example, the fact that the monthly technical level bilateral meeting between the government of Sudan and UNAMID had resumed with great progress and concrete achievements. That bilateral technical meeting, which was co-chaired, or which is co-chaired, by the DJSR from UNAMID and the relevant head of department in MOFA looked, had the responsibility of looking at all the technical issues. The idea was that because of this frequent, uh, on account of this frequent and regular meetings at the technical level, some of the issues that would otherwise have been referred to the strategic tripartite level will be obviated. Issues of visas, customs clearance, access restrictions, and other operational matters. In that meeting in, in New York, I commended the government of Sudan for the release of one million United States dollars, which constitutes 50% of its pledge towards the Darfur internal dialogue and consultation process. It was agreed at that meeting 
that all the visa issues, customs issues, will be effectively dealt with two weeks from the end of that meeting. Before I proceed any further, I would like to register a sincere note of appreciation for the warm welcome I have received from the government and the high officials of government of this great country since I arrived here in January 2016 as JSR Jinamid. I have been kindly received at least three times by the foreign minister. With the Director General of Nice, I have been received twice. And at the highest level by His Excellency, the President of this country. There can be no quantifying the advantage of access. Access at the highest level of UNAMID to the highest level of host government. In my view, this creates an appropriate opportunity for building the much needed trust and confidence that is crucial for any meaningful dialogue, mediation on behalf of UNAMID with relevant host authorities. Having made this critical step of access at the highest level of representation, what will now matter most to the discharge of UNAMID mandate is a continuous process that ensures collaboration, cooperation, and delivering on the mandate, actual mandate of UNAMID. And this can only be done if the host helps the JSR to achieve our common objective. So in other words, to put it poetically, my message and my next step is, help me to help you. We cannot water this down. For us to have a credible process of mediation, we have built trust. We will continue to build on trust. But we will also need concrete deliverables, concrete response that deals with all the outstanding issues that we need to address that would enable us to achieve the overall mandate of UNAMID. I hereby take this opportunity to reiterate my solemn commitment to do my level best to the achievement and realization of peace and stability in Darfur, consistent with the mandate of UNAMID. And in this process, work empathetically with the government and people of Sudan and all stakeholders in good faith to achieve our common objective. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press, since mid-January 2016, we've all witnessed to our alarm and discomfort the renewed fighting between Goss and the Liberation Army of Abdul Wahid in Jebel Mara area. There can be no telling the consequences that this has brought uh, about in terms of humanitarian displacement and suffering for the most vulnerable section of the population, women and children all over in the north, central, and south Darfur. This has also accentuated a high level of displacement, and our camps have swollen in numbers. From the outset of this crisis, thousands of civilians turned to UNAMI to seek refuge and protection, with the majority choosing to settle in close proximity to the UNAMID team sites at Sotoni and Tawila in North Darfur. I'm very proud of the response of UNAMID, working very closely with United Nations country teams officials. We have been able to play our part. 
working with our partners and NGOs to bring relief and succor to those in need. But in certain places, we have been not been able to have access. And so we've not been able to deliver vital emergency assistance. In the course of my interactions with high government officials, I have never ceased to stress the need to have this access. And even as I speak now, I reiterate the need for unfettered access so that the object of our mission, which is the delivery of humanitarian assistance to those in need, can be met. UNAMID remains dedicated to working in close collaboration with UN country teams to support water, to provide water and hygiene issues, to deal with water and hygiene issues, but also to provide protection to children. We are also keen to promote sensitization and risk awareness sessions so that the dangers of unexploded ordinances can be made clear to everyone so that we do not have casualties from this uh, iniquity. At this point, I would like to emphasize the wider human rights impact of such displacements. Our women and our children need nothing else from us except to provide help to them. And it is part of our mandate to provide that needed help. Overall, I want to say that across the four, UNAMI troops and police are becoming more proactive and have been adopting a more robust posture in protecting civilians. In spite of these proactive, these proactive measures, we have still had, we've had incidents. And it pains me to, re to recall what happened on night of March 2016, when we lost a peacekeeper who was killed when an unidentified armed group attacked a humanitarian convoy, escorted by UNAMID near Kutum, not Darfur. Our deepest condolences go out to the peacekeepers family and loved ones, I will, as well as to the government of South Africa. I also want to say that we have been active in the area of mediation and reconciliation activities aimed at preventing and mitigating intercommunal cr crisis across Darfur. In this regard, UNAMID has been facilitating many state and federal government-led reconciliation processes, such as between the Maila and the Reisigat, the Berti and the Zayadia, as well as between the Falata and the Salamat, to urge the parties in conflict to toe the path of peace. We are also working effectively to support the outcomes of the reconciliation processes by working with several local authorities and native administrations in the dissemination of how best those agreements reached by the parties can be successfully implemented. As we look forward to the renewal of the mission's mandate in June, We're looking forward to continue to improve on our systems and way of doing things so that we can achieve the highest level of efficiency and responsiveness to be able to serve better and to support the good people of Darfur in their pursuit of peace, stability, and prosperity. I would like to encourage government, the government of Sudan, that is, to help us to allow UNAMID freedom of movement and access to humanitarian actors so that as soon as events happen, they can be easily assessed and the vulnerable population in need of such assistance 
can be met and assisted. I want to take this opportunity to urge the rebel movement in Jebel Mara area, as well as to all the parties concerned. This point which the Secretary General has made times without number, that a military solution to the conflict in this region is not what we all expect. And it's indeed unachievable. For lasting, sustainable peace to be built, we have to do more than win a battle, a military battle. The peace, the logic of peace for Darfur must be one that is built on issues beyond military confrontation, crisis, and violence. And you cannot bring peace when you are not on the table to dialogue. So we call on all parties who are non-signatories to the latest AUHIP's roadmap agreement to come on board and join the train, the train of peace, the train of progress, and the train of development. The roadmap agreement put together by the African Union High Level Panel, and which has been warmly welcomed by the government of Sudan and by the president of, former president of South Africa, the chairman of the panel, and by the Secretary General deserves a fair hearing from the non and from the and non signatories. I want to take this opportunity to ask them and to plead with them to come on board and join that roadmap. It is the only viable mechanism now that we need to join to bring peace to this beautiful country. I would also like to commend the government of Sudan for signing the action plan to protect children from violations in armed conflict. That was signed recently when Leila SG, uh, SRSG came over here. That was an incredible achievement, and we want to commend them for that. Children need all the care, need all the love, need all the attention, and need all the peace if we, as their parents, must have a future. So once again, I commend the government for signing that action plan, and we request that it be fully implemented and actualized for sustainable peace and development to be achieved in this country. All of these efforts, when they come to crystallize, we hope, will sustain and nourish and nurture the Doha document for peace in Darfur. And speaking about the DDPD, I want to say that the follow-up uh, committee is scheduled to hold a meeting here in Khartoum on the 25th of this month. We hope that at that meeting, progress will be made. Further concrete work will be done. And at a, at a press conference, they will, of course, keep you fully posted on the issues before that conference and the conclusions that will emerge therefrom. Having said this, let me once again thank you for your kindness and for your presence and for your listening ear. And we hope that you will continue to support UNAMID's effort, and indeed also that of the UNCT team, who have uh, kindly provided the ambience for this conversation this morning. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
Thank you very much. Shukran Jazeera.